Hello everyone, my name is Simon. Welcome back to another episode of Will It Rally. It has been quite a while since the last one actually, but we are back with a bang and seems as the new Michael Schumacher documentary is coming out on the 15th, I want to say. I have decided that the best way to celebrate his career is to take his 2004 Ferrari Formula One car that he won his seventh world title in and drive it around a rally stage. What could possibly go wrong? Well, let's find out. So here we are at the start line and we shall get underway in three, two, and a one. Let's get going in the F2004 into turn one, locking the brakes straight away. The tyres all stone cold at this stage because I don't use tyre warmers because it makes it more interesting as I nearly spin out. I've hit the pole straight away there. And because this is a Formula One car, it takes about probably six, six or seven months to go into reverse gear, which is not what's meant to happen. Short shift to second and up to third as we go through the little chicane there and now through the right hander where we so often go off and hit one of the many many poles on the outside. Oh goodness me that was a bit larry through there and through the left flick. Avoid the log pile but I've hit the inside wall which is something that I've never done before and well something that hopefully I won't actually do again. Now as we come down towards this um, quick left flick, I'm calling everything left and right flicks in this video already. I've taken that with a great degree of skill, which is something you don't often see. I've taken a fantastic racing line through that corner and missed the pole by about half an inch. Now, breaking towards the jumpy jump road, many jumps. I've hit the, the wall there on the, well, the fence thingy on the outside and that will have caused a few hundred thousand pounds worth of damage. I've spun out over the crest and that's not what's supposed to happen and now I'm going to have to spin it round but I can't because I've got sodden traction control which was a terrible idea. I don't know who decided to put traction control on a Formula 1 car. It takes all the joy out of it and now I've absolutely cooked the rear tyres and that's, well that's not meant to happen either. Uh, what temperature are they? Let's have a look. They are 150 degrees which is about as hot as I am. And, uh, well, I mean, that's, maybe that's a slight exaggeration of my attractiveness, but we will, oh, for heaven's sake, would you just turn round, you stupid piece of Italian engineering, I don't know. <laughs> that was a, a really poor insult that I just, I cannot drive, like, well, I haven't been able to drive cars for years now, but I really can't drive this. I mean, we're up at 225 degrees of the rear tyres. So even with traction control, it would appear that the rear tyres still spin. Unfortunately, they don't spin when I want them to. That's the main issue. And, well, they're not going to be cool before the end of the stage. So it would be as well to just yeet the car around. Locking all the tyres coming into this corner here. Oh, hold it. No, that hasn't worked at all. Now, oh dear, I've hit the transit van. And that's I've run over people as well. And that's, well, I mean, neither of those things were meant to happen. But they have happened. And so we are going to have to... Well, accept them for what they are and just move on as, oh my goodness me, don't touch the verge because they are about as high as Snoop Dogg. There we go. Oh goodness me, I've spun out, well I've had a half spin there and that's not ideal, but I've managed to collect it and then immediately had another one. I'm cutting through all kinds of trees, it's like deforesting the Amazon, it's just absolutely unbelievable now. I'm having to reverse, which is not something that the Ferrari F2004 was designed to do and it's not something that it did an awful lot of in real life but it is something that it will be doing well majority of the gear that I use is reverse around this rally stage I've locked all the fronts and I've just about got it slowed down but unfortunately this thing has the turning radius of an oil tanker uh, unless, of course, you just bury your right foot, in which case it has the turning radius of a shopping trolley. Um, and that's, well, I mean, it's it's never ideal. I don't know how that's happened. I'm just going to have to bury my foot and do a full 360 degrees there. And that's, it's worked out remarkably well, to be fair. But, um, well, the rears are at about 180 degrees as I spin out again. Under the Red Bull inflatable with the chap on top. There we go. We, uh, we recognised him in the last video. He's been there for three years and I only just recognised him when I was rallying the what, uh, what was it? Was it the trolley? It was something like that. I can't remember. It was that long ago. Now, spin the wheels in reverse, which is something that I never thought I'd be doing in a Formula One car. Run over that baby tree. Well, it wasn't quite a baby tree. It was more an adolescent tree. 
And now we make our way through this thing. Oh, don't hit the speed thingy van. I've hit the shed instead. That's a more acceptable target than a, uh, a van. Let's be honest, the van probably has insurance. The shed, well, I mean, the shed might as well. But if it's in that state, then the insurance has probably already been claimed. Now through the super slow hairpin that I've missed the apex of and almost hit the wall of. And now we are on to the fan fiction straight as I've nearly lost the back end over there. I'm just going to short shift, put it all the way up into fourth gear. Now as we fly underneath the Red Bull inflatable, I'm using literally about third throttle. And as we come over these crests here, braking just before the crest, before the wall to avoid hitting the wall. It's amazing just how manoeuvrable this car is given that it's a Formula One car on a rally stage. It really is in quite incredible how... Well, it performs even on this surface. Um, well, I mean, the surface, as far as coding cares, is the same as any racetrack. It's just particularly bumpy and uh, and uneven. Oh, dearie me, that hasn't worked, but let's be honest, no one expected it to. Oh, look at that in the bottom right. Somehow, some way, all of the tyres are in their ideal temperature operating window as we come underneath the Red Bull inflatable. I've got some air there. That would have broken a few vertebrae and I've got even more air there. That would have completely shafted all of the vertebrae. And now as we come over this now, we're doing about 400 kilometers an hour. The counter steering into the right hander, touching the fence on the left. That's just for for good luck and to increase the, uh, the speed out of the corner. I'm getting all over the verges, which I'm I told myself not to do earlier in the stage. I'm oversteering left, right and centre. Now the I don't know where to break chicane. Break wherever you're damn well please. And still hit the fence on the outside of the left hander. Reversing out of the uh, of the fence there. And now making it through the right hander. Look at that. That's the best way that I've ever taken that right hander. And what a car to do it in. Now under the... 70 millionth Red Bull inflatable. I've hit trees there and that's not what's supposed to happen. Down into second and first gear for the Christmas tree corner. Hit the Christmas tree. Counter steering on exit because I am a car control god. And now as we come through the the wilderness straight-ish straight with Bear grills and stuff. Revving second gear to the point where the gear is about to fall apart using all kinds of counter steering techniques that have never been seen before on this channel. Well, in fact, in motorsport in general. And, uh, well, as we come through the final couple of corners, we will come across the line to set a, five, a six minute 55.434. And that's a very satisfying number if ever I did see one. We probably could have had it down at, uh, at about, well, maybe... 6 minutes 30 if we hadn't been dawdling around just spinning constantly on the uh, the jumpy jump road and many jumps. But anyways, I do hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, then please do leave a like as I try and select the cinematic camera. If you did, please do leave a like and feel free to subscribe. The new Schumacher documentary is out on Netflix on the 15th or whenever. I don't know, I'm not being paid to say that, so I don't particularly care about details. But apart from that, my name's been Simon and I'll see you guys in the next video.